Hi everyone, this is Editor Clone. This is an amazing podcast episode, but it does contain swear words. You have been warned. Now on with the show. Welcome everyone to another podcast episode of How Builders Think, a Lego Star Wars podcast all about different creators in the community and how they use their techniques that they've learned and how to build their mocks and so forth. My guest today is a good YouTube friend of mine that I've known since the summertime. He he and the other person that run help run their channel together uh, have done a really op- epic job on a lot of their mocks. Please welcome M from GM Productions. Hi guys, I'm glad to be here. Yep, I'm glad you want to be on this. I'm super excited for today. Yeah, I really enjoyed your podcast series, so I really wanted to be a guest on it. Nice. I'm glad. I'm glad people are enjoying these because I I really like I really enjoy recording these. It's a lot of fun to get to know everyone else in the community. Definitely, yeah. So before we get started, is there any uh anything that you want to ask me? Um. Yeah, but maybe it's a little bit too soon in the podcast to ask. Okay. <laughs> those well, questions already. <laughs> that's fine. We can. Uh, yeah. You can ask me those later. So I guess yeah. I'll. St- I'll start off with one of my more uh, standard questions that I ask. So, how did you get introduced to Lego Star Wars? Uh, I just grew into it. Uh, first, started with Lego City. I still have a mega collection of Lego City, probably bigger than my Lego Star Wars collection. Uh, I used to have a mega big city in my room. Uh, of almost 20 base plates or something. It was really crazy. Uh, I don't have pictures from it. And now it's all in boxes, so that's pretty sad. Um, But yeah, and G also grew in there, I think. He's a big Lord of the Rings fan and the Hobbit fan. He first collected the Castle series and later Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. He also has a really crazy collection and a really crazy amount of minifigs and yes in the end he started collecting uh, lego star wars because of the clone wars i think like the uh, clone Wars show yeah clone wars show nice yeah i i say clone wars show because there's I, there's a couple of shows that that are just called the clone wars it's like oh which one which one is everyone talking about but that's really cool yeah I've always been interested in doing Lego City. The problem is, and I kind of talked about this, I think I've talked about this on a few of my streams. It's just like, well, I don't have the money <laughs> to do yeah. both Lego Star Wars and other themes at the same time. The money is too yeah. thin. <laughs> I was just lucky. I have uh, I have two brothers and they collected it with me. So uh, on Christmas time and for birthdays and just... When we got presents, we uh, all three got Lego City stuff, so our collection grew pretty fast. Nice. Now these are just like the, I don't want to say standard Lego City sets, but your your city that you had before you put it away was it more of like a like a modern city or just using a bunch of like the the sets already that Lego produced. Mo- mo- Yeah, mostly sets. Uh, I customized some buildings, so I made them higher, uh, bought bricks for them, made them higher, and yeah, probably just mod a lot of buildings. I never built a building all by myself, so I used the Lego version, but made it a little bit more my own version. Nice. I feel like that's a really good method of just modding. Uh, official sets to meet what you want especially when it comes to lego city because i mean most of the lego cities that i've seen use the standard like use standard base plates and things like that it's not like uh i forgot the term but where you don't use base plates and you just make whatever you want and uh yeah so but that's a that's really expensive if you really want to build your roads etc i just um bought the bricks for lanterns and made some walkways etc but i didn't 
really build my roads and terrain, etc. That's just too expensive, too crazy to do, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. I can only think of a few people that are able to do that, at least that are on YouTube. There's pl there's plenty of people who probably aren't on YouTube that have these mega Lego cities in their basement or whatever. So, Yeah, I do really like the new um, Lego City roads. I don't know if you have seen those already, but they are really dope, I think. I really regret... Um, I mean, not regret, but I really wish that they would release those road pieces earlier. Oh, are they not released? It's just like uh, those Lego leaks, like they've released a picture or something of them. Oh, I thought they already released it. But oh, yeah, I, I have probably. no idea. I know I briefly yeah, saw... Yeah, no idea. Yeah, I, I like briefly saw something about a new road or whatever but i was like oh whatever <laughs> it's like a city yeah, i don't care <laughs> yeah i felt the same way but um those road pieces are really cool and i think those are pretty good for mock building i think i might buy some to use in mocks well if you think they would be good for mocks i should definitely investigate and see what they look like yeah and what I just can do check with them. it out they look really clean it's like big tiles not Ooh. base plates, but big tiles. So it's pretty in interesting. Yes, I've seen... The only time I've seen someone like use massive tiles, so the smooth plates, is uh, Solidbrick Studios. I believe he used some on his Mandalore mock he did. Um, those look really nice because it just cuts down the amount of lines that you have. Because when you just yeah. have a bunch of 1 by 2 tiles, it looks awesome, it's nice and flat, but you just have all these lines because of the gaps between each plate or tile that yeah yeah that's yeah that's probably the biggest problem with large areas that you have to tile uh, it's really hard to get those lines straight and make it look really clean um if you take a closer look at it so speaking of tiles and making things look nice and smooth are you a snot guy or are you a stud guy joffrey is the snot guy i'm the the other guy <laughs> okay so like you prefer to see studs or do you prefer not to see studs i mean i prefer to have a combination of both i think some studs uh doesn't matter to see some studs i think it would it makes a pretty cool effect. Um, but yeah, I'm more of a flat guy, probably. Okay. But Joffrey uses a lot of snot to accomplish that. And I'm more of the guy that buys a lot of tiles to accomplish <laughs> that. I, yeah, I'm about... I'm pretty close to that, too. It's like, well... I don't own that many tiles, as you've probably have seen and everyone else who's come to my sorting streams i only have that one container full of tiles whereas i have like multiple containers of everything else so but i mean i do prefer a combination of both snot and stud because i think if a thing or a mock or a uh, custom design is all s snotted then i mean it's it's really it could be really hard to tell that that's actually lego whereas if you got a few studs here and there mixed in and a really uh, thoughtful and really nice looking way that's like oh that is definitely a lego thing and it looks awesome so yeah i feel the same way about that but uh yeah i'm i'm also the same way i i don't really do snot stuff that often it's not one of those like techniques that comes uh to my brain right away when i'm going to do something so yeah i'll just i'll just lay tiles down everywhere <laughs> yeah Which... yeah just really b balanced on our channel she does the snot things and I just do the tile things. So together we form a pretty good team. Yeah, that's really nice that you have a team. I'm I'm just here by myself doing it alone. So it takes me a bit longer to get some stuff done. <laughs> but uh, I guess going back to, I guess my original question of how you got into Lego Star Wars. So like, what were some of the first sets that you can remember getting that were Lego Star Wars? And like, what what about my, those ones appealed to you? 
my first lego star wars set was the i recently saw it on someone else's video he had uh um what's the word that i'm looking for he had a sealed set um i think it was the droid battle pack he had that set sealed and it was one of my first sets that i ever got so i was really jealous um are you talking yeah, about the, are you talking the about droid battle yeah are you talking about the one that came out in 2007 or so that had like yeah. a couple battle droids a couple super battle droids yes okay yeah that one nice. that was my first star wars set. that's a and good that's a really good one to start with <laughs> yeah um but yeah i didn't buy it my parents did so. oh, i mean I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's where most of my collection has yeah, sure. come from, too. <laughs> sure, for me. For me, yeah. Yeah, like I said. Yeah, I, don't... Oh, go ahead. No, yeah, I don't know uh, which set uh, that Chauvry got first. I mean, did he start collecting around the same time that you did, or was he later or before? When it I came think... to LEGO Star Wars, I mean. I think I was before, but he switched over um, because he saw all my stuff and he was like, yeah, Star Wars is way too cool <laughs> to not collect. So he probably switched over because of me, but he had some Star Wars. Um, I sold my castle stuff to him and he sold his Star Wars uh, stuff to me. Uh, and after some time, he just said, yeah, I'm not going to sell any more Star Wars. I really want to collect it. So he started collecting Star Wars with me. Nice. Yeah, like I said, the that battle, that uh, droid battle pack, I mean, is a really good one to get into with because of like it being a battle pack and you only needed like a few, you only needed to buy a few of those sets to have like a sizable army to go up against clones because... Yeah, yeah I think I, um, I got a clone trooper battle pack. I got around the same time. I'm not yeah, I don't know when they released that set, but I'm pretty sure I got those pretty close to each other. So that was pretty nice. Yeah, if I remember right, they released either in the same wave or one was in one wave and the other one was in the the next wave. But so yeah, I mean, I wish Lego would make more would make battle packs like those too because those two were really balanced as well like in the clone yeah, one you got two plain clones a shock trooper and a mm -hmm. uh, 327 star core so like you can make a sizable army of those but the most important is the two plain clone troopers were the most important because you can use those in literally anything and you got two of those instead of like modern battle packs where the one guy you actually want to army build with they usually only give you one of in a battle pack it's like why like why <laughs> yeah they were also pretty cheap um if i remember i paid uh, or my parents paid like 12.50 euros that's like 14 points i don't know <laughs> uh like 15 dollars or something for a battle pack so that were these were the days. Yeah. Uh, I guess they were selling it more expensively in Belgium because if I remember right, my family, we only paid $10 per battle pack back no, then. Yeah, we definitely paid more than $10 for that. Is it... So is like everything Lego related more expensive then in Belgium than, uh, no, than you've seen? No, I don't it? think more expensive. I think some sets are, but some sets are also um, cheap okay so it's just one of those things where some stuff is some stuff's not okay yeah yeah probably don't know really so how soon was it after you started collecting lego star wars that you started mock building with it um i started mock building around the same time that solid brick studios started his huge kashik mock oh okay so, nice yeah, I think when I grew older and I stopped really playing with uh, Lego Star Wars, then I started like mock building with it because I really liked it still, but I was a little bit too old to yeah play like a child with it, if you know what I mean. 
I know what you mean, but I mean, do you ever stop playing with Lego Star Wars? I still swish around my starships whenever I'm done building them sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Because yeah. I mean, like, it's like that nostalgia thing where it's like, wow, I can make this thing really fly around. Or like, or when you're just like testing, you're like, oh, is this a uh, custom design or this set really that sturdy? And you just start play like swishing it around to see if nothing pops off or whatever. And it's like, oh, I remember doing this when I was a kid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I know what you're saying. Yeah. Nice. I just got exposed. Shit. <laughs> but yeah, I remember I remember Solibrick Studio doing the Kashyyyk mock. I had oh I had discovered him before he had uh started doing that. So I was uh, I was around the community back then. The community has definitely gone way bigger since then, which is nice. Yeah, way bigger. And a it's lot more probably... A lot more inclusive. I was, I was gonna say, like, where it's a lot easier to find each other than it was back then. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, but he, I think, Solid Break Studios really got me into mock building, um, and I was also pretty lucky to. Uh, we got some specialized Lego shops here in Belgium, so not uh, official Lego ones, but uh, shops, stores that um, sells that are selling um, official Lego bricks and they have huge, but really huge bigger brick walls and all the stuff in that wall is really mock building based. So they had all the bricks to build the first mock. So one day I went to their store and just spent 150 years or something. Uh, on did you, did you mock clean build, them out? Mock building stuff. <laughs> did you just clean them out of one part or something? Or did you just no, did you buy a lot of a lot of stuff? A lot. A lot of stuff. All. But yeah, they just had all the right bricks. Uh, yeah, just mock building basic bricks. So it was pretty easy to get into mock building. Um, you didn't have to wait or order stuff on Bricklink or yeah have to wait um when they until they put something good in the pick a brick wall in the lego store um they just had everything that you needed for mock building nice those that sound those stores that you're describing sound very similar to the secondhand shops that i have in my state or yeah the only difference is yours sounds slightly cooler because they have a, the giant like pick a brick like wall. The secondhand shops I have, we they don't have that. All you have if you want to buy a lot of brick is they're like unsorted Lego tables where you just got to shove your hand in there and grab as much as you can and put it in a bag, and you you can fill up as many bags as you want. But like you can't like individually be like I want like ten of these parts unless you like search for them in this unsorted mess of parts so having like a pick a brick wall would be really nice <laughs> yeah and they also sell like um, bags of certain bricks um, so if i wanted to build a great building uh, i just asked and they made some sort of yeah they made a cup for me but yeah how I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah, your your shops sound very similar to the Brick Lab uh, shop that Trandoshan Bricks uh, goes to. Because they, if I yeah, remember probably. right, he said that his like the Brick Lab shop also has like a uh, pick a brick like wall, and he can just ask him like, "Yo, do you have like twenty uh, one by one brackets or whatever?" And the and they can, if they have it, they'll just give them a, a bag or whatever of it. Yeah, and uh, the prices were also pretty good. Um, the cups were less expensive and bigger. Um, you had a good parts in the wall. And um, if you ask them, like, yeah, I want to build a great building. Can you guys give me some stuff? Um, <laughs> they just yeah made a bag of it, and it was like 5 euros for 60 or 70 bricks. Um, so really cheap prices nice that sounds awesome <laughs> i wish like I, I said earlier i wish i had something like that here <laughs> That'd be really yeah nice. i i haven't been there in in yeah in like three years or something but i really want to go back there one day 
Sounds like you need to do it for some of the projects you got coming up soon. Yeah, probably. Might make it so you Yeah, actually but... get the stuff this time. Yeah, that's that's one big advantage, I think. So what kind of mocks did you like to build then? Because I know a lot of the mocks I've seen you and G work on recently have been like combinations of landscape and building. So like, was it the case? Was that the case back then as well? Like you like to do like landscapes and buildings? Were you more of like a building guy or were you more of a, a landscape guy back then? Yeah, more of a landscape guy back then. Um, we didn't have the bricks to build buildings. Um, all those bricks went to my Lego city and um, all the stuff for landscape went to Star Wars. So um, when I started the channel five or yeah, five years ago, um, I was also collecting Lego city. So yeah, all the bricks went to Lego City and all my uh, scenery stuff, etc. went to Lego Star Wars. Um, yeah. Nice. So that makes a lot of sense when I went and watched some of those old videos of yours from when you started your channel. That, makes, that, that explains why certain things look the way they did, which is nice. Yeah, I want to. Because we, we used plates to build walls, etc. We didn't use bricks at all. We just used plates to build like the Endor bunker or the base on Utapau. We just used plates to build our walls and didn't use bricks because all those bricks were in my Lego city. So, Yeah, they those older videos really reminded me of a lot of the uh, a lot of the like mock. I call them mocks now. They don't deserve that. They don't deserve that name when I made <laughs> But it was like, I didn't have enough parts as well to make like buildings. So what I would do is like, I'd stack bricks. Cause at that time, I, I still at that time just gave all my stuff to Lego Star Wars. So I, everything I owned was for Star Wars, except for a few random things. So I'd build the building, but every time I need to make a floor, if I was like doing a second uh, two story building or whatever, I'd use green base plates and like, try and work out a way that the green base plate was supported by some bricks underneath of it so it wouldn't collapse or whatever yeah and then i would just do that so there was a there was a yeah. really popular video on an old channel i used to run before i uh, switched over to this one and deleted that other channel uh or it was it was something like that it was like a three-story building or a two-story building with a ceiling and so the roof was like a landing pad. I can't remember what I put on there. And then, yeah, I was just using base plates for the floors because I couldn't spare. I didn't have enough plates at the time to actually make a floor. Um, yeah. And the other issue is all my stuff was multicolored because I didn't have enough bricks to make anything look nice and crisp and actually have like a, a color scheme to it. So it's all these random yellows, blues, reds, greens everywhere. But I got the structures built, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most important thing yeah I, um, my biggest mock on the channel before uh, Naboo uh, the mock that I that I did with Geoffrey uh, five years ago uh, it was like a Jedi training clone base on Corellia or something we also used um, base plates for the roof because we didn't have the plates. I mean, Joffrey had them, but he didn't know he had so many plates. Like, he's the guy that goes to his basement or, um, yeah, I don't know how, like, in the roof, <laughs> I can't find a word. That is oh, right. attic? Yeah, the attic. Um, he's like the guy that goes to do these rooms um, and finds a box full of Legos. Yeah, that type of guy. <laughs> Goes into so like, like go, goes into his attic and he's like, oh, I didn't know I had this box of stuff. Yeah, I should have known about this. Yeah. <laughs> he's dead guy. So I, I, when we were building mocks, um, if he asks me like, um, do you have that piece? I um, immediately no, like no, I don't have that piece. Or yes, I have um, this amount of them or something. 
and he's like, I will have to look at the attic or basement. <laughs> like he found he finds Lego all the time. That's just I would love to live in his house. <laughs> so you're the organized uh yeah. team member and he's the uh I got stuff scattered everywhere. Let me go see if I can find something, guy. Yeah, but he's improving, he's improving. Um like after we when we destroyed Nabu, he really tried to sort everything out. And he um I didn't how do I say this? You like you didn't have to help him as much with it or No, I I said to him like you're not leaving this room until <laughs> all your Lego is sorted. He like you like became his mom <laughs> for a second. Yeah. Like you're not you're not leaving until this is done, G. Come on. Yeah. Man. So yeah, he definitely improved. All his stuff is sorted at this moment. That's good. Yeah, I I used to be like G for a while, where I was like stuff was scattered everywhere. But now that I'm taking my sorting seriously, I'm so glad I'm doing it now because I'm actually like some of my streams. It's like wow, I didn't even know I had this part. Or it's like, oh, I now have enough parts, I think, that I can actually make something look cool now instead of doing the multicolor stuff I used to do back then. So, I guess speaking of sorting, how do you do your Lego sorting? What kind of like, uh, uh, like how do you go about doing your sorting? Uh, yeah, my... Yeah, how do I do that? Just bo just big storage boxes uh, and like not drawers, but those storage boxes for like screws and stuff, like work stuff. I use those to sort my Lego with. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, I just every time uh, when my mom or yeah, when my mom goes to the store, she buys some storage boxes and give give them. I'm not saying this right. I'm standing <laughs> over my words. She. So she like she goes to the store. She's like, "Hey, M, do you need any more containers?" And you're like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Okay, I'll I'll pick you up a few more." Yeah. I got gotcha. you. That's how my that's my that was my mom for a while until I. Until I switched over to getting these Acromo containers, now it's all on me to get more of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I think at first I uh, kept everything in bags, but it's much easier to have them in boxes when you're building, so I switched over to boxes. I agree with that. Having stuff in either like drawers or the boxes that you're talking about is much better. My issue is I don't have enough drawers yet, so most of my stuff has actually gone back into bags in that like giant green tub container that I've got. They're all sorted, so I actually know, if I grab the bag, I know exactly what's in that bag. But it's just the fact they're back they're back in bags is most the most annoying part for me. It's like I tried to get away from it and now I've just made it worse. <laughs> yeah, that's my life after number. <laughs> Yeah, how I guess how long did it take to uh, disassemble Nabu? Because it took it took a long time to get it assembled. But I mean, in my experience, disassembling is a lot quicker because you already have yeah. all the stuff. So you just sit there with like your brick separator and just go crazy on it, and get it done. <laughs> yeah, I think we think a week, but re every evening, like four hours of disassembling. So probably around. 40 hours or something pretty fast really yeah especially for how big now boo was yeah so yeah we were pretty surprised or how fast we had disassembled it so what about the new nabu mock was your favorite part probably the hangar because it looked really uh, majestic or how do I say this? <laughs> Re really really big really epic it was a really big part of the mock. i would um, i would I say majestic was a good choice of a word yeah uh and like 
I'm an architect, so I really like mm. designing um, uh, older looking buildings. And Teet has some nice architectural elements to it. So um, I had a fun time building that hangar and kind of designing it. Yeah, the hangar looked awesome. I especially love the part where it was the transition from the hangar to the Theed, uh, to like more of the rest of Theed with, with the other buildings, so your little doorway that would like, because of the limited amount of space you had, the doorway to this one building would actually end up being the door to the hangar if like, you hadn't uh, put the the black bricks there or whatever. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, that was like my favorite yeah. part. I really especially liked how uh, the architecture and the thing, like how you were able to capture the architecture of like different Theed buildings where the uh, the battle droids were uh, marching. If I remember right, they were like marching prisoners or whatever on your mock. Yeah. On your mock. I, I really liked that part. Also the like the big green hill that you guys were able to make was awesome too yeah it was a pretty big hill it was really i was really tired of building it i think i yeah probably days or some yeah days and a lot of filler brick underneath and we didn't have enough filler brick for the mock so uh yeah i started building that hill with First with big bricks, so that went pretty quick. But towards the end, we I used like one by one bricks to build that big hill. So it was really not so sturdy anymore. And kind of a pain in the ass to build. But I was pretty relieved when it was done. And yeah, I was pretty happy with it, how it turned out. Yeah, it looks awesome. I did not realize you had to use such small bricks towards the end there. That would be a huge pain. One by one, yeah. one by one bricks and plates and things are already a huge pain. But when you got to place down like hundreds of them or thousands of them, sometimes it, it gets really annoying. It was probably the hardest part about the hill. Uh, what, the brick. Yeah. What were some of the techniques? Sp- since this is a podcast all about building, what kind of building techniques did you and G use for it? Like, uh, like snot and things like that. Uh, for the mountain, we used some snot techniques for the mountain, and for the green hill, we didn't use any techniques in particular. Particularly, I can't speak English. Mm. Um. So, yeah, I think snot is the technique that we use the most. Um, We didn't use any crazy techniques in that mock. Um, That's definitely something that we want to, we really want to try to use crazy techniques that not so many people use. Uh, when we build our clone base, that's like a goal that we want to achieve. Um, I mean, we used some techniques, like uh, the technique to make like lever levers. Yeah, levers. Uh, I don't know if you saw uh, that, I, but I think I know what you're talking about. But as you describe it, I will probably know more about what you're talking about. Yeah, we use like really old Lego pieces uh, to achieve certain things. Um, yeah, I really had to search really old pieces up on Bricklink because they don't make those anymore and those were pretty good to do certain tricks with it. Um, so yeah, that's that's one technique that I really like in the mock. Uh, you can't really see it in the finale video. Uh, you really have to see it in the like this building series itself. Which um, which episode of the building series would I need to go to the best see this lever technique that you are talking about? I think the last one or the one before that. I don't remember. Uh, That's all right. Yeah, I'll I'll look up the last two later today probably because I I think I know what part you're talking about, but I I still have the 
like antenna piece that uh lego used for like making the battle pack or the backpacks on uh battle droids still so I i'm pretty sure i still have the wrong part in mind so i will and i invite everyone who's watching podcast go go re- i mean just go rewatch the entire naboo series everyone who's watching this because it was awesome but especially if you want to see the technique that uh m is talking about definitely go watch the last two uh episodes uh episodes of the series to better understand and see the technique he's referring to because i'm definitely going to go because uh i have a similar goal as well as u and g where it's like i want to use some like uncommon or even rare you might say techniques on uh future things because i think it just makes your stuff stand out more when you can pull something off that's that no one's seen before or has hasn't seen in a long time so that's the thing that we really want to aim for with our clone base um that's why we would like to use lights etc just to do something really unique i mean naboo is pretty pretty dope and pretty (laughs) large and unique i think but technically wise we didn't use that much techniques um more yeah we used some special techniques but i can't really describe them like the when we build up the stairs and uh, levels in teats itself um, like we used certain techniques to connect the walls that couldn't be connected like one wall was based off uh, jumper plates and one built one wall was just um, placed on studs so the the ends of the ends of the wall didn't connect that good so we used some cool techniques to um, get those things fixed but I don't think we really showed that off in um, the building series itself. It was also the first time for us to do a uh, build series so it was not hard but we still have to learn to talk and show off things a bit more so that's something we want to fix in our next building series you know what i'm saying yeah i i can see that i don't know i thought you're not but i thought this first mock series was awesome i was well entertained while watching it and learned quite a bit but i i know what you mean when it when you said a bit ago where it's like hard to explain the techniques because it's like for me i always i hear the word technique thrown about here and there in different people's videos but i mean i personally only know of like two to three standard techniques so when people call something a technique i'm like I don't know if you, I don't know if like, I don't know if there's any like more like standardized techniques or people are just calling like how they were able to connect this part with this other part in a a unique way, a technique or, or something else. So that's something I need to do better at is learning more techniques and learning more of like what uh, the Lego community means when we say techniques. Cause that's, I don't know, that's. I, that goes along with me wanting to try to do build something build stuff in different ways is well i need to learn what these other techniques are so i know what hasn't been tried yet yeah that's yeah i, I had a hard time explaining what techniques uh we were using in our boat just because i mean it's not is a technique but it's something that we commonly use so we use it a lot so for us it feels like that isn't a real special technique or something if you know what i'm saying yeah that's me with a few of the things that i do the only issue i'm having right now is i can't really describe what my techniques are because i haven't built a mock in six ish months now just because my sorting project took over and i want to get really far into that before i start building mocks so i actually know what parts i have instead of having to make a bunch of bricklink orders (laughs) Um, yeah but that's a good thing like you really need to sort your stuff out first and know what you have um, before you start building a mock it makes life so much easier yeah and that's why I'm super happy that I'm starting it now Um, my last question about the new Naboo mock that you and G made is uh, what level of a builder do you think uh it would take in order to have someone else maybe like recreate it like would you say 
Yunabu Mok was like like a novice builder could do it a, a media a, an intermediate builder or like an advanced builder could make your mock or I guess a different uh, way of me phrasing that question is what degree of a builder do you consider yourself to be like an advanced builder an intermediate builder or a novice builder I'm assuming not novice <laughs> No, not novice, um, but I don't want to say advanced, but, uh, because I think there are some people on YouTube that just make, yeah, just use uh, cooler techniques and are probably better at building than um, Geoffrey and I are, um, but yeah, I want to say Probably better than medium, but not like the god tier builders. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not okay. that. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a hard question. Yeah, I I will like, try you don't to, want to say. Yeah, it's one of those questions where you want to you don't want to come off as bragging, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I think everyone can build something like Nabu. Um, you just have to stay building, learning from others, and just enjoy it. And I think you will definitely achieve something like Nabu. Um, if you have the ideas, the bricks, and the motivation to do so, I definitely think you can achieve something like Nabu. That's a great way of putting it. I would say yeah. for myself, if I, if I were asked that question, I would put myself as... I'm better than a novice builder, but I'm not the greatest. So I'm like in between novice and intermediate right now. And that's just because I put myself there because I just haven't built in a while. So I'll be I'll be pretty rusty whenever I get back to mock building. But once I get into it, I'll be able to do some cool stuff. Yeah, I'm really excited to see your mocks. <sighs> I mean, I've, I've thrown out a few hints here and there. It, it'll be something good. It'll, hopefully it'll also be something that hasn't been done a whole lot of because i don't think i don't think it, a lot of people really care about the planet that i have in mind but if any, for those who've seen the uh christmas haul video that kind of gives a hint as to what it might be yeah i still have to see it it's just yeah I, I also apologize yeah i also apologize for that video being so long as it is i did not mean to make it that long of a video but like it just ended up being that way yeah I uh went in I went to too much detail with that uh, advent calendar but I when I was doing the editing I was like ah I still think it's pretty good and informative so I'll leave it in there but yeah, yeah that made but, it super long <laughs> Yeah but I understand if you start talking um like if you want to say something really short really quick you uh easily reach 3 or 4 minutes just yeah I don't know how many words you can say in a minute, but I think it's not a lot. And like now we're talking <laughs> about, we're al already talking for about, I want to say not 50, but 40 minutes. Um, so yeah, you probably know what I'm saying. Thanks for making fun I of can... me. Thanks for making fun of no, me. No, <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. I, yeah, I, um, I know what you mean. Yeah, I uh, sometimes can talk really slow, but sometimes I can talk pretty fast. I've talked about it out of my stream. Sometimes I just don't know what I'm saying, so it takes me a second. But, but yeah, I don't want to take too much more of your time, so uh, unless you have anything you want to ask me. I know you said earlier you might have some questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I prepared two questions. All right, so, I am I am ready. Once I answer these, we can then do trivia time, and then we'll end the podcast. Okay, so, okay. so uh, my first question is: Do you have a certain goal with your channel, or do you just let it go its own way? That is a really good question. So currently, I'm treating my channel as mainly a hobby, so just doing it for fun. However, I do have some goals in mind. But I'm not really like stressing to get there. Um, so if I could ever get this channel be to become monetized, so the 1,000 subscribers and the 4,000 watch hours, that'd be awesome. That's like a, a long-term goal I have, but I, like I said, I'm not stressing to get there. Um, 
most of my goals for the channel are really just the goals I have for like the different projects I have. And mainly the goal is just to get those done. <laughs> so finishing the sorting, finishing or getting really close to having a really awesome minifigure uh, army building collection and th like army, different armies and things, just things like that. If I do get around to making mocks, it's mainly just finishing them because I've had several mocks I've tried to do in the past and I just uh, quit working on them. So they never got done. So no videos were ever made on those. So yeah. That's, I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah, yeah, it does. So the second question is, what would you really want Disney to make Star Wars related? I like series you would like to see or things you would want to learn more of. Okay. I would really like to learn more, uh, about the time period between episode six and episode seven just because i feel like we need a whole lot more information to help explain uh the sequel films um if we can get some really good content to help explain why certain things were done i feel like that that would make the sequel trilogy more uh compatible with the rest of star wars uh, another thing I'd like to see, and we're pretty much getting it, is just the time, like, what what the clones did after Order 66. And it sounds like we're pretty much going to get that with the Bad Batch show. So I'm yeah. I'm now exci super excited for the Bad Batch show, as I once was not so excited. When they first announced the type, like, they were going to do those characters, I think, twenty in 2019, I was like, eh, they weren't the greatest characters. But now that we've seen a trailer for it, it's like, oh... This looks awesome. I'm super excited for it now. Yeah, yeah. I'm also really excited to see the series. It's always nice to have some more Star Wars content. Yes, and for me, especially because it's Clone Wars related content, because it's right yeah. at that time period. So it's like, hmm, we're finally going to see what Order 66 was like for the from the clones perspective. I mean, we've seen it a yeah. few times, but now we're actually seeing it in a show rather than like a comic or a book. Yeah, definitely like uh, Commander Wolf, etc. You see him in the Rebel series, but you don't really know the story behind uh, that. Yeah, you don't really know why and how he has gotten there. Or maybe in the uh, maybe in the books or something, but I didn't read or see anything of those. Yeah, I don't think there is an explanation right now as to how Rex, Code, or not, Re not Cody, Rex, Wolf, and Gregor all got together onto that one planet. And like how yeah. Gregor and Wolf got rid of their inhibitor ships. Like, did they learn after the Order 66 or did they know before? I also still yeah, think we don't know something. how. I think we still don't know how Gregor survived in from the Clone Wars show to show up in Rebels. So it's like, oh, there's a lot of questions that could be answered that'd be really interesting to learn. Yeah, and I really hope they do that, yeah, answer their, those questions with this new series. Mm -hmm. One off-topic thing I'll say before we switch into trivia time is I really want to see uh, maybe like an episode or something, some some form of content that shows us how Gregor was during the Clone Wars show when he didn't have amnesia, so when he was in full Republic Commando mode with his squad. I would really yeah, like to see that. Yeah, would be awesome, yeah. It sounds really dope. <laughs> but yes, unless you have anything else you want to ask me, we can uh, switch into trivia time. I'm ready for trivia. All yeah. right. So for everyone who's new to the podcast series and doesn't know what trivia time is, trivia time is where I ask our lovely guest three to four different questions about their YouTube channel. And it can be anything. Some of the questions have been how many views they've gotten on their channel recently. Some questions have been what is this been what's this one character doing in this one video and things of that sort. So the, oh, I guess, are you ready? Yeah. I t <laughs> Do I have a choice? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. F trivia question. Number one, how many vulture droids did you have in your first YouTube video? Which as far as I could tell is the droid base on Utapau Mach. So I think four, because we had four 
um, vulture droids at that time, one hyena bomber, one separatist vulture droid, and two cis micro fighter vulture droids. Yes, I will give you a yes for that. So, I mean, for me, I don't consider the hyena bomber a vulture droid, so I didn't include it in my number. But yeah, you are right. There were three of the, uh, like, you had that uh, tra uh, Trade Federation colored, the brown one. Yeah, And you Trade had two Federation, of yeah, the uh, CIS colored ones, so, yeah. yeah. I must have missed the hyena bomber as well. I don't remember seeing one in that mock, but, uh, like I said, I might have missed it doing my research yeah, on that video. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just the three and not the hyena bomber. Fun fact, actually, that's not uh, the first YouTube video. I, I mean, it's the first that you guys can see, but I actually got most of my really old videos on private. Uh, but my first video was a stop motion. Nice. All right. Trivia question number two. What was the first video you talked in? Uh, I remember. I think it's... Uh, the clone gunship maintenance hangar mock. I hope it is. Is that uh, before or after the mock contest results video you did? Um, I can take a quick look. Wait, man, you if 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 it's before, you're definitely putting holes in my research then, because the answer I have. Is that mock contest results video? Uh, no, was it's the, the first one that huge I did, Lego Star Wars clone gunship maintenance anger. Okay. It's the first video Damn where it. I was talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's six videos before that. Okay, I must have missed that when I was. Yeah, probably, but it was the through. first time talking, um, and yeah, it was a pretty hard time recording that video. Um, I remember doing it like five or six or seven times again, again and again. Yeah, always made mistakes, etc. That's how I was when I started doing videos for this channel. I was like, oh, I haven't done YouTube in a while. How do I say words on video anymore <laughs> and make it sound coherent? So a lot of those first videos on my channel, I re said what I said in those videos several several times until i finally got something i felt proud about yeah something yeah the same same here all right third and final trivia question how much did your nabu mock cost to make um i think around two thousand three hundred and ten Point zero two euros, and that's around two thousand eight hundred dollars. I don't remember the exact number, uh, but it's definitely not what we have invested in the mock. It's what the mock is worth. I think we have invested around one fifth or something. Yeah, I probably should have phrased that question as how much it's worth because you said that in yeah. the video. So yes, you are correct. It is two thousand three hundred ten and two euros and for uh us dollars that is you had written it was uh 2837 and 49 cents so quite an expensive mock if you had to buy all all the parts now but luckily that uh, like you said in the video you had about a fifth of the stuff already so that definitely helps yeah, lower the cost <laughs> definitely uh luckily <laughs> Another reason why I'm glad I'm doing my sorting project. Unfortunately, most of my official sets are being turned into parts, but it means I don't have to spend a whole lot when I get back to mock, mock making. Yeah, if you build mocks, you really have to think about the long term. Um, you can just say, like, this week I'm going to spend 400 or $500 on a mock. Uh, that just isn't possible. <laughs> You would have to be like, oh, um, okay, now I buy these bricks. Now I buy 10 bricks for, um, for example, the Naboo hangar. But the next mock I will make in a few months will have a 10 building in it to make up for that. So you really have to 
think uh, in advance before you start buying bricks. That is true. It's, for anyone who's interested in into making mocks, uh, take that advice and run with it because it's definitely going to be the case. Because the biggest problem with mock making is just having the money to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's the me. That's also it's also a little bit sad. I mean, there are probably some great builders out there that just don't have the money to build great things, like wasted talents because of money. Yeah, that's, yeah. I guess yeah. we'll have to live with the fact that Lego isn't the cheapest hobby. It's not the cheapest hobby, and we're doing one of the most expensive themes in that hobby already. So, got a double yeah. whammy against us. But I mean, it it is what it is. Eventually, those great builders will find a way to get around that. Yeah, for, definitely. For sure, so, yeah. all right. So, where can people go to find you on the internet? So. Um, feel free to check out the channel GM Productions of me and G. We do building series, hauls, army building videos, and just standard mocks. In February, we will, uh, like I said before, start an epic clone base, bigger and better than our Naboo mock for sure. Around the same time, we also do a building series in which we make a Geonosis mock, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we are also planning to make custom droids and vehicles. G has already made some very nice and accurate ones. The instructions for these, uh, we are probably going to sell or give away some to loyal viewers. Um, and you can also find us on Instagram, uh, G underscore M underscore productions. And finally, you will have to subscribe to Clone Place before mm -hmm. checking out our channel. <laughs> Thank you. It's for like a must. Thank you for the shout out. <laughs> no problem. Yep, I'll have all the links to GM's uh, social media things in the description below and in the i cards from now on as well. Um, but yep, I have been Clone Plays uh, as the host of How How Builders Think a lego star wars podcast all about of course how builders think uh again i appreciate having you on the show and this was a lot of fun <laughs> it's great to finally be able to talk to you not through text <laughs> yeah i feel the same way <laughs> and so thank you everyone for watching this i hope you all like this really long podcast episode today and we will see you all in the next one bye bye, -bye.